explain the too much animal protein and what does that scientifically do to our bodies? Well, I did talk about this a lot, but I'll give you the, this person wants like the cliff note version to give to their husband. <laughs> Me to repeat that again. Well, basically what I'm saying to wrap that up is that the hormone that is the most powerful at controlling our, how long we live, how fast we age, and whether we get cancer or not, the primary hormone that controls the aging process is IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, which is very fine-tuned to animal protein intake. So with lower levels of animal protein, I'm saying animal protein, not protein, because plants have plenty of protein, but animal protein in particular is more biologically complete and has more methionine and has more L-carnitine and more and other branched-chain amino acids that particularly promote IGF-1. When you eat proteins that are not as biologically complete, then they are absorbed more slowly, and in order for the body to utilize them to make them biologically complete takes time, and it keeps the level of IGF-1 more moderate. So the American diet is one of the most high amount, highest amounts of animal products worldwide, and therefore we have one of the highest rates of cancer. Of course, in recent, in the, in recent years, we're exporting an American way of life and American style of eating across the world, so most populations that were eating much less animal products than we do are starting to eat more like us, and then we're seeing uh, increased rates of cancer and shortened lifespan in those countries as well. But animal protein regulates cancer growth. It regulates growth of your muscles and growth of tissues. And as adults, we shouldn't be taking in substances that accelerate excessive growth. The real question, I mean, it's not even, um, it's well established that increased animal protein shortens lifespan and, and increases, shortens lifespan um, even in the animal kingdom, even among carnivores, excess animal protein shortens lifespan. Can I explain that for a second? Let's say we have, and I described this in my book called Fast Food Genocide that's coming out in October of 2017. Um, I described this mechanism via which protein accelerates deaths in all species of animals, including a lion or a tiger. Let's say we have a, um, the Arctic lynx, the lynx, which is a cat that eats rabbits. They eat the Arctic hares. If the lynx ate too many rabbits, excess protein, they would wipe out the rabbits and they would become extinct. If all the hare, if they just got all those rabbits and kept eating them, eating them, eating them, they'd wipe them out and then they would become extinct because they live off the rabbits. There's some control in nature to make sure they don't wipe out the rabbit population. So if the, so if the hares start to eat too much protein, it slows down their lifespan so they can't produce as many children. But what it really does is slows because of epigenetic changes to the DNA and how IGF-1 affects the DNA. It shortens the lifespan of their children and their children's children. So the excess protein could shorten the lifespan for three generations, just like we see in humans. When we eat unhealthfully, we don't just damage our own health. We damage our children's and our grandchildren's health at the same time. So, our, so we're seeing an increased risk of disease because of this process of overeating eating sugar and fast food and excess protein, and we're not just damaging ourselves, we're seeing the new generation being more damaged, more autism, right, more allergies, where people always ask them, how come there's more autism, how come there's more allergies, more childhood cancers, more, more obesity, more diabetes, because the diet we eat damages our offspring too. So the point is, nature has this set up to, to damage future generations, because then the offspring has to, because it takes a few generations, for the hares to replenish the population so they don't become extinct if they're being overeaten. Did you follow that? Yeah. We need a few generate, we need to slow the um, reproduction and lifespan of the cats, of the lynx eating the hares, so the hares can come back and replenish their population so neither the hare nor the lynx becomes extinct. Did you follow that? Yeah. There's this pot balance in nature. If a population is overeating, especially overeating protein, protein becomes one of the leading nutrients, the macronutrient that controls lifespan and growth reproductive ability, and excessive amounts are dangerous. But particularly, excessive amounts are even more dangerous to, predator, rather from, um, to prey animals, not to predator animals. And we're more of a prey animal, you know, but in any case, the predator animals are true carnivores with big fangs and claws and short digestive tracts, used to be handle, designed to handle a lot of protein, right? We're more, we're a primate. We can handle a small amount of protein, but our tissues and our systems even get more stressed out when we have too much animal protein. We're not designed to handle it. It ages us prematurely. And, and I discussed in those, and the quick version I discussed in those 
in the lecture I gave earlier this week was that the long-term studies following people for, for decades shows dramatic lifespan, um, prob dramatic decrease in lifespan, and dramatic increased risk of heart attacks, and dramatic increased risk of cancers when humans eat too much animal protein. So the, and we talked about what would be a safe amount. And, and the safest amount the mess, the, is to eat really little. And it might be that a vegan diet is more lifespan promoting than a diet that has a little bit of animal products, like 7 to 5%. But we don't know that for sure. And most data makes it very small differences between um, eating 5% of animal products versus zero. There are other factors in the diet that are, have a more pronounced effect on lifespan. Whether your, animal, whether your diet is animal product free or not, and those other factors which are more powerful than whether your diet is completely animal product free or not are things like phytochemical exposure, green vegetable exposure, exposure to nuts and seeds, fatty acid balances, excess calories, and glycemic effect of your diet. But excess calories is a major factor, right? And it's not good enough to, even if you're not overweight, consuming excess calories is going to shorten your lifespan. Cert certainly almost all Americans are overweight. And being overweight is, a life, is significantly lifespan shortening.